today's video is going to be something slightly different. I've not really ever mentioned this before in a video because I don't know, I just haven't really, hasn't really been relevant to speak about. But I wanted to speak about it because, and I've wanted to do this video for a long time because I think this is going to be quite relevant to a few of you if you've got dogs or pets or any animals and you know it just might be helpful to just somebody. So I thought I'd just share this with you now. This is going to be Milo's cancer story. So Milo is a Springer Spaniel, he's a pedigree, and we actually rescued him when he was seven years old from um, somebody that had him before, but they actually had a baby and they couldn't look after him anymore. <laughs> so before we had Milo, he actually belonged to somebody else, and then before that had a previous owner. And before that, he basically was really badly abused. He was kicked and battered and everything else that you can think of and it was just I just it's heartbreaking I can't believe like that he went through that and when we first had him like he wouldn't eat or anything without us being in the room and he still sometimes doesn't and that is a real attribute of a dog that's been abused so we decided to obviously give him a much better home and he's so well looked after and spoiled rotten. What happened was we, we decided to take him because we just moved into this house and we wanted a dog. So we actually didn't pay anything for him and he was just absolutely amazing. Like, I just love him. Um, if you've got pets, you'll know yourself that they just become part of the family and he's literally like, because we haven't got any kids, so he is my baby. <laughs> And if you haven't got pets, you may know somebody that has that might, you know, might find this useful. Anyway, so we've we had him for about, I think it was about a year, and he's just like so close to us and everything, and he's just living a completely normal life. Anyway, I basically was like fussing him, um, and I was just stroking his chest and everything, and I found a lump. And it was just here, like, by his armpit. And I thought, you know, I was panicking because I thought, oh, God, you know, it's going to be by his lymph nodes. And I didn't know what it was. So it was quite a hard consistency lump. So I took him to the vet, got him checked out, which obviously, as you know, if you've got pets, costs an awful lot of money. And we took him there, and I got him checked out, and he had a biopsy, and he had to have a sedation. So he had a sedation, and we had the results back. We had to wait a few days, and it turned out that lump was just a fatty lump. So it was a hard consistency. It was just a fatty lump, nothing to worry about. They then came back and said, however, we felt your dog thoroughly, and on his left arm, leg, <laughs> we have found another lump. So they did an investigation on that as well and it turned out that it came back and it was something called a mast cell tumour. Now this is a type of cancer that is a skin, sort of skin cancer um, that can grow underneath. So the vet basically told us that here on his arm there was the lump <laughs> and it was basically running extremely close to his vein and they were worried about operating on it. So we had three options. The first one was to amputate his leg because with this it's got different grades of growth time and we just didn't know how long it was going to take, um, you know, whether it was going to spread or, you know, how aggressive it was basically and how long he got left. So there was the, the chance of amputating his leg which is going to cost £1,500 and if I'm honest with you, completely honest, we hadn't got him insured. So, you just never think anything like this is going to happen, and we'd only had him a year, and it's just something that you will, you know, in your mind, you want to get around to, but just didn't have the time. So, we didn't have him insured, so it was £1,500 to uh, have his leg amputated. I hated, absolutely hated the thought of that. I just couldn't stand the thought of him having three legs. I know dogs can be very, very well on three legs. But I just thought if there's a chance of us saving it, then we need to try because it's just such a shame for him to live, you know, when he's still, he's still very popular, like Springer Spaniels tend to hold on to their young years for quite a long time. So, you know, I, did, I really didn't want to do that, but obviously we just had to weigh up our options. So the second option was to do nothing and to just give him the rest of his life as he's living it and see what happens when we don't know the aggressiveness of the cancer cell. So 
that wasn't an option for us. We couldn't leave it. He's, as I say, he's like, you know, a baby to us and we couldn't leave it. We just had, that was just was not an option. And the third option was to take him to see a specialist. And this was called Willows in uh, Solihull. They're basically like booper for pets. The, the place is absolutely incredible. And basically we were told to go there and get assessed by them. So we got referred there and we decided to go and we were referred there to a, an amazing vet um, who assessed the situation, did another biopsy and went through numerous amounts of tests and things, came back again that it was a mast cell tumour and it needed operating on if we weren't going to sort his leg out. So, I mean, if we weren't going to amputate his leg. So we decided to go ahead with it and it was an extremely nail biting procedure it was very so 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 close to his vein and basically what they've got to do is bring like a skin graft from here and like wrap it back over his leg when they took it out basically um obviously it's a lot more complex than what i'm explaining but yeah so we had to have um an operation done on him and he was he went in and it was the most heartbreaking thing like i've ever done like leaving him there and he was just like looking up at me not wanting me to go and it was horrible absolutely horrible so we had the operation and everything did kind of go well they said they said it's gone as well as it could have and i wanted to go and see him so i went and saw him and he was just completely out of it like he, he was really sort of high on sedation very slow wouldn't eat anything obviously he's in a strange environment and he'd been sort of kept in a cage or whatever like it was a large cage or whatever but you know he's been kept in confinement which he hasn't at home and he basically was there for about six weeks it was only meant to be there for one to two weeks to heal but because of this skin graft it just wasn't taking it was taking ages to bind and it was just awful like his leg was a total mishmash and I'm going to insert a photo now because just want to obviously raise the awareness for it. So if you're squeamish, look away now. So yeah, as you can see, his leg was a complete mess and like it just wouldn't take. And they were, they had to sort of keep re going over it, take his stitches out, redo it again. The poor thing went abs absolutely through the mill. Eventually, it started to look a bit better and eventually started eating a bit more. And me and Ed were going to see him twice a week, um, you know, more than that. Just any time we could, we were going, going to see him. And it was just such a shame. Like, it was horrible. The house felt so empty without him. And it was just just horrible, horrible time. And after about six weeks, it was time for him to come home. And he was okay. And we managed to save his leg. And literally, he's st still walking absolutely amazingly on it. He's got a little scar. I'll try and do um, a close-up now. And the but the skin graft did take in the end. He's got a little bit of um, like an area where the hair hasn't grown back, but yeah, all in all, it's great. But the operation we had the bill through for the operation, and it actually came through at eight thousand five hundred pounds. And obviously, we were just like in complete shock. But that's because they charge like one hundred and fifty pound per night, as well as obviously all the care and operation and antibiotics and everything else that he had to have like they charged that amount of money like 150 pounds a night for him to stay there but because like they hadn't projected that to us in the first place and they knew we hadn't got insurance they actually capped it at five and a half thousand um we were fortunate to be in the position at the time that we could pay it so we did um but this is what i'm saying so you've got to get your animals insured literally somebody told me it about two months before i found his lump and said if you do anything get your animal insured and it's something like you say yeah i'm gonna get it done but as i said in the beginning it's just something that your day to day life takes over and you don't do it or if you're an organized person then obviously you do do it but some people like me um just didn't didn't do it and in the end yeah it cost us five and a half thousand pounds as well as all the vet vet bills from before so it's probably about six thousand in total and it's a hell of a lot of money but it was either that or he's going to have no leg or we leave him to die and that wasn't an option so if i can say one thing to you if you've got animals get them insured because it is just so worth it however 
the operation was obviously that expensive that it would have covered it would have covered only four thousand pounds i think i only cover up to four thousand pounds in operations some policies anyway so the insurance was like would have covered the four thousand and we would have had to fork out for the other four thousand so in all in all it wasn't really that great but things like other operations or things that are a bit easier to remove than milos you just need to get them insured it covers obviously a, a load of things but now because he's been through that we can't actually get him insured so and he is like he's nearly nine years old now um so you've just got to kind of take day to day what happens you just don't know so if you've got pets as well and you know you haven't got them insured please 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 just just do it just try and get it done because Honestly, you don't want to be left in that position like we were and you know, we, but we are so so glad that we managed to save his leg and he's still walking around like a normal dog and completely normal and we've not had any problems since. Have we Pupski? So that is Milo's story. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was a little bit informative if nothing else and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. It's just if I can you know get the word out there that you must check your dog for lumps because you just don't know what they are and how long it's going to be nine times out of ten you know it will just be a fatty lump but and he, his former cancer was quite rare but you know you just don't know you've got to keep your eyes open and make sure you have a good old feel especially around their lymph nodes and chest area and obviously arms and legs or all legs <laughs> and neck and everything you know just have a good good feel and yeah so i hope this just raises a little bit of awareness anyway so thank you very much for watching as always and i will see you again in my next video thanks a lot bye